Hi, it's Dr. Lori. Are you ready for real bargains? Yeah, those are the stories that I can recount from folks who are out there shopping at thrift stores and yard sales and flea markets for objects, art, antiques, and collectibles. They send me their photographs of these objects, I appraise them, and I identify the real bargains. Are you ready to get started? They were good enough to give me permission to recount these stories, and I'm going to share them with you. Come on. So this real bargain is from the Pacific Northwest, specifically the area of the Haida people in the Inside Passage of Alaska. It's a beautiful piece. It is a carved box by an artist named Denny Dixon. It came to me from a priority member, a member who has the subscription service with me. So she sends me in this particular picture of this box and she shows me all sides which have the different animals of the Haida people on it. It looks a lot like a totem pole if you've seen totem pole animals. So it has a raven on it, it has a beaver on one side and other animals on the other sides. It's really a beautiful box. It's carved in something called argolite, carved in, right? beautifully formed by an artist, as I said, named Denny Dixon. So Denny Dixon artwork is pretty expensive. And I said, well, how did you acquire this? She said, oh, I've picked up things for years at yard sales and flea markets, and I picked up this box. I like boxes. So I picked up this box for $1. So I said, you don't know yard sale, flea market? She goes, I think it was a yard sale. And you know, I'd go around and I have a lot of things, Dr. Lori, all kinds of stuff. Well, yeah. Okay, like all of us, we have all kinds of stuff that we picked up all different places. So I evaluated it for her and it was a real bargain because Denny Dixon's boxes like these actually resell the retail market where an actual piece sold just like this one, $350. She got it for a buck. So I was talking on a video call, you know, we do it through, I do it through Zoom, I do it through FaceTime, Skype, you know, people will talk to me uh, for a particular amount of time. And this particular woman had gone to a thrift store and she said, you know, Dr. Lori, I'm kind of weird and I'm proud of it. <laughs> she was really cute and it's true. So I said, well, what do you mean by you're weird? She goes, I like unusual things. I like something that's, that's rare that not everybody else has. So she's not the type who's going to go down to the pottery barn and buy the same, you know, piece of furniture that everybody else has. So she's telling me about her, what she found at the thrift store. So she found these ram figural vases, right? So you'll notice there's a hole in the top of the, of the ram figure, and there are two of them, and you put flowers in them, dried flowers, or probably not silk flowers, but probably dried flowers, because they're sort of in that, in that 1970s, 1980s look, so dried flowers were in, I don't know if you remember that, but I remember that. So anyway, so these particular pieces, she says, I got them for $12.99. She goes, and I've seen kind of others like them on the internet, but I wanted to ask you what you thought they were because I'm seeing these, then they look like lions, but I haven't seen anything that looked like rams. So she was able to find something similar, but she couldn't really identify what they were, which is why she called me. So they're actually David Stewart ram figurines. And interestingly enough, they're a pair. Usually you don't see two of them sitting around a thrift store. Why? Because she bought them for $12.99 and they are worth $250 for the pair. David Stewart is a relatively well-known stoneware designer, ceramist from California. And these pieces are some of his quintessential interior design or decorative arts works. That's a real bargain. And there's more of those at your thrift store at that yard sale and at the flea market. So go out there and find them. So here's the next real bargain. Are you ready? Do you like these? See, if you like these, you need to go into the comments and tell me that you like these. Because a lot of people will say, you know, I like this version. I like this video. I like that one. I want to know. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want to know. So this next real bargain comes from one of the members of my priority subscription service and he was writing to me and he says you know dr lori this is a decanter i got this decanter i picked it up at a sale i only paid a couple bucks for it and i really don't know anything about it it's about 12 inches tall and it's a nice decanter i don't know if it's cut glass i don't know if it's etched glass i don't know and then maker i don't know much about it but here it is so I get back to him and I said, your decanter is worth just about $150. And I explained to him what it is, you know, it's cut glass, it's this, it's made in this time period, all that information. So he comes back and he says, well, how do you sell something like that? And I said, well, you could sell it online. You can list it online. So he said, well, I have a store online. I guess I will put it in my store. Okay. So he puts it in his store and the next day I get an email from him and he says, Dr. Lori, I am flabbergasted. 
I got $175 for my decanter. I put it up last night and it was sold right away, right? So most people would say, oh, it was too low, it was too low. He said, I was so happy. He said, it's a wonderful example of how I know that, I, that the money I invested in your service is helpful. I want him to be able to identify the next time he finds a decanter like that for a couple bucks that he picks it up. Because I want you to make sure that you, you get those real bargains, that you realize that you leave the junk wherever it is, the flea market, the yard sale, the thrift store, and you pick up the good stuff. But he said, I was flabbergasted, Dr. Lori, because that particular piece went so fast on my store and I didn't think it would sell at all. So look for those real bargains. Let's see what our next real bargain is. This real bargain is just amazing. And, it, and it's so simple. It's so simple that you're going to just go, oh, you know, I, it, it's just, it's amazing. Anyway, so I want to read it to you because I want to get it right for you. So a couple of things that I want you to see. I, I met this particular person who's one of my priority members, sends me objects all the time, you know, unlimited, this kind of thing. And they write into a form, right? Ask me the questions they want me to answer and I get back to them on email. So I want to read this because I want to get this right. So she sends in this question. She says, I won this ceramic plum painted Curvo with a C giraffe um, at work, at a work auction a few years ago. It has its original tag on it and it's 22 inches tall. I always ask about dimensions. Then she says, I love the purple plums on it and I think, at least I think that they're plums, Dr. Lori. Can you tell me? It's really cool. What's it worth? Okay. So I look at it and it has an original tag on it. And if you read the tag, the tag says, T-U-R-O-V, not C-U-R-O-V. So she's looking all over, all over. She's looking to try to find a work that's made by some somebody named C-U-R-O-V when it's T-U-R-O-V. Sometimes it's as simple as trying to read the tag properly, and it's not her fault. You know, she, it looks like a C. If you look at it, you can argue, hey, Dr. Lori, it kind of does look like a C. You know, that, that curve of a T, like a cursive T letter. This becomes a whole thing. She spent a long time trying to find it before she said, hey, Dr. Lori, what is it? This is about identification. There was a mark on it too, and also the style is really well known. Well, so she gets it at a work auction, and it's, pretty, it's a pretty amazing piece. That particular piece she got at a work auction for a couple of bucks, it's worth $250. I mean, that's a real bargain. That's, okay, you don't want to tell your worker, right, your co-workers that, right? You want to be like, hey, you know, I got this at the work auction and I'm not telling anybody. Okay, but 250 bucks if she had been able to properly read that particular tag. The other thing I want you to think about with figural pieces, if you think it's cool and it's a particular style, that style is one that's really just known to that particular maker. So when an expert looks at it and boom, it doesn't matter, tag or not, that style is what tells you what it's like, right? The way a Monet looks like a Monet or a Picasso looks like a Picasso. The same thing with this little giraffe. That's a real bargain. Let's see what's next. So another real bargain for you. This one's really good. I met someone on a video call and he said that he loves to go thrift store shopping. He was a good thrifter and he actually went to a thrift store that he goes to all the time and he's made friends with the folks at the thrift store and he found this particular plate and had a fish on it, an image of a fish. So ceramic plate, image, image of a fish. And he had it and he took it and he put it back on the, on the shelf and he took it back in his cart again and back and forth and back and forth. And he wasn't really sure if he wanted it and he had enough stuff and he was kind of unsure. So he put it back and then he walked around and then he basically said, you know what? I think I'm going to go back and get that fish dish. Well, on the back of the fish dish, it was signed. It said Antonio Pietro. Antonio Pietro is a very well-known California-based ceramist or ceramic artist. So he says, okay, I'm going to put it in here. He wasn't sure. He kind of knew the name, wasn't too sure about it. And he puts it in, it's $3. And he's thinking, $3 for one plate, this is kind of a lot. Maybe I shouldn't buy this. But he does go forward and he buys it. I'm talking to him on the video call and he says, well, Dr. Lohr, I want to show you this piece of silver and I want to show you this other piece and I want to show you this. And then he goes, and then there's that plate. And I said, I want to see that plate. So he shows me the plate and I said, that plate is an Antonio Pietro. You spent how much on it? He goes, three bucks. Three bucks, it's worth $450. That's how much these 
fish image plates about this big by Antonio Pietro actually resell for. That's a real bargain. So this real bargain comes from a video called Appraisal and it's about ceramics. You know, so you go to thrift stores, you go to thrift stores all the time. Whenever we're all in thrift stores, we know there's lots of pottery in thrift stores and everyone's looking for the mark and look for the mark. And oh my gosh, what about the mark, the mark, the mark, the mark. I want you to look at condition. I want you to look for quality. I want you to look for hand painting. I want you to look for a good colored glaze. Oh, what about the mark? Yeah, the mark's good, but the mark's not everything, right? So here's what I was able to tell this particular person who spent $40 on these two pieces, a centerpiece of fruit, formed fruit, right? And a compote. So one's a piece of majolica, lead glaze ceramic, dates back to, of course, the Renaissance, becomes very popular in England in the late 19th, early 20th century. And then the other piece is a Rococo revival piece, you know, the lovers and King Louis the 15th, and everybody's partying in the French Rococo time period in the 1700s in France. And basically, did you hear the, the France, the ah, right? My accent from Connecticut, ah, right? Anyway, so basically what you're seeing here are these two pieces of ceramic. They're pretty cool. They're really nice for 40 bucks, right? For both of them, for 40 bucks. So she buys these and she says, I really like them. I think I might keep them and I like the green. So she went for the color. She went because that color she thought would look nice in her home. That's a good reason, that's fine reason to buy something at a thrift store, no problem, great. Turns it over, looks at the mark, evaluate the piece, and one of them has a very identifiable mark, the one that is a compote, and that's sort of like a base pedestal with an area where you can hold fruit, a compote. Um, some people call them a standing fruit bowl, it just depends. So the pieces are really fine. You know what they're worth? They're from the late 19th century and the early 20th century, so the late 1800s to the early 1900s. The first one, which is that fruit centerpiece, right? It looks kind of like a fruit tree that you would put on the center, a majolica lead glaze. That one is worth $200. Not a bad deal for 40, even if that's the only thing you got. And then the second one, which is that green compote with the images from the Rococo painted around it, that one's worth another $200. So for the $40 investment, the real bargain here is worth 400 bucks. So do you have Hummel figurines around your house? I know what you're thinking. Oh, Hummel figurines, terrible. All these experts who are like anti Hummel figurines. Hummel figurines were extremely important in the post-war era, and Hummel figurines were made by the Goebel Company. This is an important point. They're not made by someone named Hummel at all. They're called Hummel figurines, and many of you know this, I know. They're called Hummel figurines because they're based on the drawings by Sister Maria Innocentia Hummel. And she was a woman who was born in the early part of the 1900s and died in 1946. So she dies in her 30s. She draws these beautiful drawings of little kids in the Germanic manner, you know, their little outfits and such. And those particular drawings are then taken by the Goebel Company and that company makes them into the earthenware ceramic hand painted and glazed figurines that you know as Hummel figurines. So a video call um, client gets in touch with me and she says, I went to the thrift store, I spent $10, my family was mad at me. Now here's a family for you, right? I went to the thrift store, I spent a lousy $10 and everybody's angry. And I'm like, what are they mad at you for? They were mad at her because she, they thought she spent too much money on five Hummel figurines. She said, I don't know what this means. They keep calling them Hummel figurines and they're saying they're not worth anything. And this is what I love about these people. They don't know what they're talking about, but they're all saying things like they're experts. Now, granted, I have to say, I know nothing about baking. I burn all of it, the brownies, the cookies, the anything, make me make a cake, I'm burning it. Okay, so I don't say I know how to do this because I don't, <laughs> but I have to say with this, for $10, she got a great collection of Hummel figurines. Now, she didn't know what Goebel meant because they said Goebel on the bottom. And I said, well, Goebel's the factory that makes them. She said, well, my family said that Hummel makes them. Well, Hummel doesn't make them. And this is something that nobody seems to get out there into the, the antiques and collectibles vernacular or the, the vocabulary of it. So it's important to understand that. They were marked Goebel. The minute you see that they're marked Goebel, that's when you know, okay, they're some of the later Hummels, right? They're the ones that are later than the 1940s or 50s. The Hummel, the Hummel um, 
figurines and the Goebel company have 11 different marks that they mark on these particular pieces and hers were marked into the 1950s as well as up to the 1970s and 80s. So you're going to see these particular marks and you're going to start to understand in fact when they were made. You learn the marks, you learn the dates. You learn the marks, you learn the maker. You learn the marks. It's not hard. But it's better to be able to first learn whether or not you have a good quality piece. So I told her some of the attributes or traits of how you actually identify a Hummel. Like you look for the, the MI Hummel embossing in the back. You look for the mark on the bottom. You look for the face because the faces are painted different ways as the decades go by. A 19, the figurine that's a figurine of the apple tree girl, for example, from the 19. 50s will not look like an apple tree girl painted in the 1980s. They look different because it's a different studio artist painting them. Back, back to my story. The five Hummel figurines that she bought for $10 were worth $300 as a set. Wow, amazing, right? I know, these are some great real bargains that were found by folks just like you. So keep watching, I'll keep sharing them with you, and good luck finding your real bargain.